Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a black green plus one plus one counter synergy deck featuring Gragma, Skyclave Ravager, three mana for a 0 0 legendary Hydra Horror that enters a battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it, and whenever another creature we control dies, if it had any plus one plus one counters on it, we can put a plus one plus one counter on Gragma, and when Gragma dies, we get to make an XX black and green Hydra creature token where X is the number of plus one counters on Gregmaw. And even though Gregmaw is legendary, playing a second copy out is still not too bad, since we both get a Hydra token from one of the Gregmaws dying, as well as we get to put an additional plus one plus one counter on the Gregmaw that stays in play, so that's why we're still playing the full playset. And then another new addition from Zendikar Rising is Nissa of Shadowed Bows, four mana for a four loyalty planeswalker with landfall, putting an additional loyalty counter on it whenever we play a land, and then the plus one lets us untap target land we control, and it becomes a 3-3 elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn, and then the minus 5 lets us put a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands we control onto the battlefield from our hand or graveyard with two plus one plus one counters on it. So Nissa is not great against any aggressive decks, since she doesn't really protect herself all that well, but if we can play Nissa and follow it up with our Fabled Passage for instance, we get to trigger landfall twice, putting Nissa all the way up to 6 loyalty, so we can potentially minus 5 and still have a Nissa in play, and then Nissa is great against any control decks, being able to pressure them with the plus 1 ability and getting value with the minus 5. So these are just two cards I wanted to highlight before going over the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst as a nice cheap removal spell, destroying a creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost 2 or less, and we can also kick it for an additional 2 and a black, so for 4 mana total we can destroy any creature or planeswalker instead. Then we also have the full play set of Swarm Shambler, 1 mana 0, zero enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and we can pay 1 mana and tap it to put an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on Swarm Shambler, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to make a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. Now do keep in mind Swarm Shambler specifically says when a creature becomes targeted by a spell an opponent controls and not an ability, so some removal spells like Skyclave Apparition are actually abilities getting rid of a creature, so in that case we won't get any insect tokens, but Swarm Shambler still makes for a nice mana sink in a late game. Then we also have two copies of Vastwood Fortification, one mana instant, putting a plus one plus one counter on target creature, and we can also play it as a tapped land of Vastwood Thicket, so the flexibility is quite nice. And then we've got two copies of Primal Might, which we can potentially play for X equals zero if we just want to prey upon to fight an opposing creature, but we can also play it for X and a green, in which case target creature we control gets plus X plus X before the fight, and we can also just use it as a pump spell if there's no opposing creatures, so very flexible removal spell. Then at 2 mana we've got two copies of Shovel, Bane of Monsters, a 1-3 legendary human rogue with Death Touch, saying at the beginning of our upkeep, if an opponent controls no permanence with a bounty counter on it, we can put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls, and whenever a permanent an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it dies, we gain 3 life and draw a card. So Shovel rewards us for slaying opposing creatures, and combines very nicely with our various fight effects, since we can make use of Shovel's Death Touch to take out opposing creatures, no matter how large they are, so it combines very nicely with Primal Might, as well as Inscription of Abundance, which we'll get to in a second. Now one card that doesn't synergize very well with Shovel is Heartless Act, because a bounty counter prevents Heartless Act from killing a creature, so that's usually a two card combo you want to avoid. Then we also have two copies of Scavenging Ooze, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two creature, that for a single green can exile a card from a graveyard, if that card is a creature, we gain one life and put a plus one plus one counter on Scavenging Ooze, so it also ties into our plus one plus one counter theme. And then we've got our full play set of Inscription of Abundance, a card I've grown very fond of in these plus one plus one counter synergy decks. It's a 2 mana instant, letting us choose one of three modes, between putting two plus one plus one counters on target creature, target player gains X life, where X is the greatest power among creatures they control, or target creature you control, fights target creature you don't control, and for kicker for two and a green we get to choose all three modes at once. 
And our final 2-drop is Skyclave Shade, a 3-1 that cannot block, and we can also play it with Kicker for an additional 2 and a black, in which case it enters a battlefield with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and it also has a landfall, saying whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, if Skyclave Shade is in our graveyard and it's our turn, we can cast it from our graveyard, and we can also decide to play it out of the graveyard with Kicker, so very nice card in any grindy matchups where creatures end up dying, and it can also take advantage of the opponent trying to mill us, so it's also very nice against the various mill decks. Then at 3 mana, besides our full playset of Gregma, we also have 4 copies of Oran Reef Ooze, a 2-2 creature that enters a battlefield and lets us put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, including the Ooze itself, and whenever the Ooze attacks, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature we control with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so it can grow itself, but also synergizes with the rest of the team, and most creatures in the deck come with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it already. And then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Polukronos Unchained, a 0-0 legendary zombie hydra that enters the battlefield with 6 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, but we can also escape it out of the graveyard by exiling 6 other cards and paying 6 mana, in which case it enters the battlefield with 12 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so yet another card that benefits from the opponent trying to mill us. And if damage would be dealt to Polukronos while it has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, prevent that damage and remove that many plus 1 plus 1 counters from it. And for one, a black and a green, Polukronos fights another target creature, so potentially gives us access to repeatable removal, which is quite nice, and also synergizes with the rest of the deck. And then we've got our two copies of Nissa, and then topping off our curve, we've got two copies of Elder Gargroth. No plus one plus one counter synergies, but just a very powerful five drop as a six six with vigilance, reach, and trample. And whenever Gargroth attacks or blocks, we get to make a three three beast, gain three, or draw a card. And then last but not least, we've got two copies of the Great Henge as a nine mana legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, and then taps to add double green, and we also gain two life. And whenever a non token creature enters a battlefield, under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and we get to draw a card. So great synergy with the rest of the deck, and also a nice card draw engine, especially against the more controlling decks. And then we also have two copies of Turn Timber Symbiosis, which is part of our mana base as a land we can play untapped at the cost of three life, or we can cast the seven mana sorcery, letting us take a look at the top seven cards of our library, and we can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, and if that card has converted mana cost three or less, it enters with three additional plus one plus one counters on it instead. And then the rest of the mana base includes four copies of Fabled Passage, which has good synergy with Nyssa, and then two copies of Indatha Triumph as our dual land of choice that we're playing over the temple, just because of the basic land types and the ability to cycle it in late game. And then we've got eight copies of Basic Forests, seven Basic Swamps, and one Castle Lochthwain, which enters the battlefield untapped unless we control a swamp, but then also gives us a nice card draw engine in the late game. We're not playing more than one copy just because we are primarily green, so getting to triple black to activate castles is not going to come up a whole lot. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand, especially if we find a third land in time. And then we've got Shovel plus Inscription to maybe fight. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn one Swamp. Yeah, I guess I'll still play Shovel first here. If my opponent has any 2-drop, we maybe get to kill it and draw a card. Acquisitions Experts, pretty decent too here. I think I want to keep both removal spells and then... Probably get rid of one Oran Reef Ooze here. And then we'll still be able to hit our land drop at least. So I'll go with the Thirst, that way if we draw land we can still play a Scavenging Ooze. Alright, that works. Opponent on mono black. Another expert. I guess they can have Grekma. Although if they're mono black, the ooze is probably not gonna survive, so I'd rather just play Grekma, have it die and make a token. So I'll let them have another Oran Reef Ooze here. Although I'm probably not gonna kill the expert right away. Just sit for one, and then play Gregma, play Symbiosis tapped.
Alright, Rankle shows up. That's fine, we'll sacrifice Grekmaw. So I'm glad I kept Grekmaw over Ordinary Foos. And then I got a discard a card, probably Ooze here. And then if we draw lands, I can play Kick Description, which would be great here. Alright, awesome. I mean, Gargroth would be great too, don't get me wrong, but I think I just want to make sure Rankle dies. So two counters here. We'll gain life, and these can fight. Alright, not a bad turn. Nighthawk Scavenger and another Expert, but they still only have one party type here. So we get to keep our Gargroth. And then I guess Hydra Token attacks. Play Gargroth. Could have also opted to attack with both since we had a backup shovel anyway. Alright, Thirst kills Gergroth. And now Scavenger can try and race. So we'll have to find another removal spell. Castle's not bad. And then we can activate Castle end of turn, or we can do it now. Probably do it now. In case I find something I can play for two mana, which I did. Alright, so do I want to fight a scavenger now? I can fight with a Hydra token if I want. Or I can wait to play it with Kicker, but scavenger has death touch, so it's not going to get much better for me. Yeah, I guess we'll fight now while my opponent's mostly tapped out. Demonic Embrace. And now my opponent's also an empty, but they do have a castle. Alrighty, so hit for three. Probably fetch another swamp before I draw with castle. Then now to deck a little bit. Could have also capped Fable Passage in case of landfall synergies. But this way I thin out the deck and still have black mana in case I draw something I want to cast here. Almost get to cast Polychronos. That's going to be great next turn. We can play it and fight Acquisitions Expert, draw a card, gain three. Missile's also great. A lot of good options here. Let me start by attacking. Aha, Black Lance Paragon, fair enough. Alright, punished a little bit. Wasn't expecting the Paragon. But we do have a backup shovel, so it's fine. So, the bounty counter from the previous shovel still applies to the new one, although I don't have enough mana to Polychronos, Shovel, and Fight. Does that matter? Doesn't matter all that much. Could also go for Nyssa, play a land. Get back something from the graveyard, like Gargroth. That sounds pretty juicy. And then I still get to play an extra shovel. I will defend the land from all interlopers. Or I can play Polychronos and then next turn play Shovel. It's a bit more mana efficient. So 8 8 Gargroth, 6 6 Polychronos. And that's gonna make short work of our opponent's life total. Alright, GG's. Uh, 
And there we go. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. It's a little bit on the slow side with two lands coming into play tapped. But I just need one more land for Fable Passage to be an untapped land on turn 4. Hopefully we can save it until after we play Nissa to enable landfall twice. Alright, opponent on a red-white equipment deck. Decided to hang on to Fable Passage since next turn I can just play a second Shambler and level up the first one, which is still a fine play. Also, I could also trade for the first Charger, which is also a consideration. Now I'll take it. I could also look into just playing Grekmaw, although I'm still kind of favoring Swarm Shambler level up the first one. Primal Might for two. Could take out a small Charger, but would just trade for the bigger one. Probably not going to block, since that would mean losing the other Swarm Shambler. And then if I draw another land, I can maybe save passage until after we play Nissa. I'll take three. And now here he shows up. After a thousand years, I can finally embrace my home. The core empire will rise again. All right, so I should be able to take out Nahiri with primal mites. Hollow Blades can be tricky to deal with since we don't have any XL based removal, so we just need to go bigger. But if they can give it flying with the flying Skyclave equipment, we could be in trouble. I probably have to trade away my smaller Swarm Shambler here. Don't see myself activating that one too often. Alright, Scavenging Ooze is nice, but I think I stick to Grackmaw plus level up Swarm Shambler. The reason I fetched Swamp earlier was mostly in case of uh, Castle Lochthwain, but Scavenging Ooze is a reason to have more green. I think I'm still okay trading off Grakma for a card from the opponent's hand. Discards Imrios Call. So I can play Nissa, play a Lance, 
get back probably Grekma, and then still level up my Swarm Shambler. And now if Grackmaw dies, we get a 5-5 token, so not too bad. Could also consider attacking with a 3-3 Hydra, but I'm fine just playing a more controlling game since we have the Great Henge to pull us ahead. So like I mentioned earlier, the way we lose is if my opponent finds a flying equipment. So my opponent could have Amber Cleave. In which case it would turn into a 5 power double striker. So then I guess I would want a double block. But now I would lose the token for free. But it still makes him discard a card. But in the case of Ember Cleave, I guess this is a little safer. They would have to Ember Cleave and discard their last card. Uh, just a Bone Crusher Giant, that's fine. So we still get a token. And Greg Maul leaves behind a 5-5. Five five. And they have to decide if they want to discard their last card here to save the Hello Blade. And it looks like they're not going to. And yeah, all these tokens from Swarm Shambler, from Greg Maul, make it pretty difficult for the aggressive Boros deck. Oof, Gergoroth. So we've got some options. I think just playing Henge for now is fine. And then I can play Ooze. And I can either put a counter on the Ooze or level up Swarm Shambler. Now I can do both. I guess we'll just do this. Don't expect my opponent to have any sweeper effects, so they're pretty far behind. And now we've got a ton of life gain between Great Henge and Ooze, and then eventually Gergoroth can also be a reach blocker, should they ever find a flying equipment. Lucranos is great too, but I want to get Gergroth in play first. Keep hitting our land drops. The Ooze can definitely consider attacking here. And we'll send in the 5-5 Hydra. And then Polucrono should be the final nail in the coffin. So I can just get rid of two more creatures here. Alright, sweet. Got to see both Gregma and Nissa synergizing nicely. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a hand that's missing green mana, so this hand's great. But now I have to decide what to put on the bottom. Not sure what matchup we're playing, so I think I gotta decide between Gragma and Orin Reef Ooze to put on the bottom. And in certain matchups, Gragma's gonna be better, in certain matchups, Ooze is gonna be better. I think I'm gonna keep the Orin Reef Ooze here. And then turn 1 we can fetch a forest, maybe. Turn 2 scavenging ooze, turn 3 Oran reef ooze. And then keep thirst as interaction. Alright, opponent adventures a lovestruck beast off a red-green pathway. Alright, I'll probably just play fortification now. Since I have castle Lochthwain, I would also maybe like to fetch an extra swamp at some point. 
stone coil for two. Can maybe play kicked thirst on turn four. I'm also not opposed to trading here. Although next turn I'll be able to play 3-3 three, three Ooze, so it kind of depends whether they have Ember Cleave or not. Against Ember Cleave, trading creatures is usually good, because it makes it more difficult for the opponent to play it. And they could also have Bone Crusher Giants, which are going to kill the Ooze at some point anyway. So, I'll trade it. Shovel's great. So if Shovel can survive, we can set up Blood Chief's Thirsts and draw a card. Is it better than playing Ooze right now? It's a close call. I think I will play Shovel. Just doesn't seem like a spot where I'm gonna be able to reliably attack with Ooze when my opponent has a 5-5. Opponent attacks with both, so they're clearly signaling Amber Cleave here. So I could block the 1-1 one -one token, but then it would just be a trade. So I'll just let it happen, opponent can cleave the beast. And then we'll play Kicked Thirst. And then now, since we drew a Swamp, I can fetch a Forest. Or I could keep Passage in case of a Nissa. Yeah, I guess that's fine, and we'll just uh, play the Swamp for now. Alright, and we'll stay back. Don't think the one damage is gonna matter. And now we've got Inscription as another way to leverage Shovel. Alright. Fable Passage turning Brushfire into a 5-5. And they can equip Ember Cleave. So I'm just dead here. All right, well, that's unfortunate. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one, probably play Shambler. Turn two, fetch a Swamp and level up Shambler. Turn three, Grekmaw. Opponent with an Endata Triome into Castle. Scavenging Ooze. Probably want to play my Orland Reef Ooze on turn 3, as it's more likely to pick up additional plus 1 plus 1 counters if we get it out early. I'll take 2. Technically, I'm fine trading Shambler for Ooze, but when we have our own Oran Reef Ooze in hand to synergize with the Swarm Shambler, it seems fine to just uh, keep it around. Opponent's also playing Black, so they're likely playing quite a bit of removal, which makes the ability on Swarm Shambler relevant as well. So, with that being said, I could also just play Gregma if we expect my 3 drop to get killed. Yeah, maybe I'll run out of Gregma first. And then might as well attack with the Swarm Shambler. Hardless Act on Gregma. Removes three counters. So Gregma doesn't leave behind any Hydra tokens, which is a pretty interesting interaction. I think if the Heartless Act placed minus one, minus one counters on my creatures instead of removing it, I would still get a 3 3 Hydra. That's kind of an exception. But in the case of Heartless Act, it actually removes the counters, so we don't get any Hydras. But we do get a 1-1 one, one token, at least. Alright. 
right, so we can run it back, play an extra Grekmaw. This time I can also level up Swarm Shambler, or I can go with Oran Reef Ooze. Yeah, I guess I'll run back Grekma. And we can attack with a 1 1 token. And then I can maybe set up a kick description to eventually fight the ooze. Right, Murder Strider gonna take out Shambler. I guess there's no real point in activating this, but. Grankma does pick up a plus one counter. It's only one counter even if the creature that died had multiple counters on it. So we've got a 4-4 Grankma now. Ooze can gobble up my Swarm Shambler to grow up to a 4-4 as well. And Vivian shows up. Decoria answers. Alright. So... I think I'm okay sending everyone at Vivian. Opponents might double block Grekma, in which case I can inscription to put two plus one counters on it. And if they just block the two tokens, I can still do the same to take out Vivian. And then we still get to play Shade. And if they Chum block, I guess I could still kill the Ooze. And then uh, play the Shade. Seems fine. And then Gregma also picked up an extra counter from my token having plus one counters when it died. Opponent does still have Vivian in play. It's gonna minus two. And Murder Strider gets to search up a two drop here, maybe another ooze. So how many creatures in the graveyard? There's two total, so we can grow up to a 4-4 at the moment. Alright, Falmar Knights. 1-1 one, one Death Touch. Polucrono is not a bad draw. So, yeah, probably don't want to make any attacks here. If I send Grekmaw, they can trade for the Falmar Knight, I get a Hydra, but Polukronos can just fight a Falmar Knight easily. Could play Oran Reef Ooze, put counter on Shade. And then Shade doesn't get eaten by the Ooze, but he can still just trade for Murder Strider and then exile my Shade with Ooze. So I think it's just Polukronos and pass. And then hope to be able to fight next turn and set up a good attack, but Vivian's gonna make an extra beast in the meantime, so yeah, it's gonna be tough. To 
Rankle Master of Pranks. Luckily, we've got a 1 1 token to sacrifice. And they had another Falmar Knights. Okay. Ooh, with a great hench. That's a great draw. So we can play hench and still fight with Polychronos. I think I just gotta fight Scavenging Ooze now. I can't really afford to attack first, because then they could block with Murderous Rider and put me in an awkward spot. And I want to do this now in case they pick up more instant speed removal. And then next turn I could use Polychronos to get rid of the Falmar Knights. And then we'll keep Shade around to sacrifice to Rankle. So Henge now gives me a nice card draw engine to try and compete with Vivian. Still feels like I'm a little bit behind, especially if my opponent has some good leftovers. But we've got a chance. Another ooze. So they can make me sacrifice my shade and then exile it. And Order of Midnight played off the top with Vivian, which is why they didn't adventure first. Can't forget about that passive ability on Vivian, of course. Could also decide to sacrifice Grakma. Alright, no sacrifice from Rankle, or they just forgot to. Either way. The Ooze has one creature in the opponent's graveyard as the only creature they can exile at the moment. Well, Inscription could be great too. I think I just want to get Gargroth in play. And then we'll still have Inscription to fight at instant speed. And this can maybe help me hit my land drops as well. Ah, land is good, so now I can still fight with Polychronos if needed. Gargroth blocks Rankle. Opponent does get an extra turn with Vivian. The ground is getting pretty stalled, so it's going to be difficult to get to Vivian. Do have two copies of Blood Chief's Thirst, which could be cast with Kicker. But yeah, it's going to be tough. End of turn, I can take out Falmer Knight with Polychronos if they don't force me to use Inscription. Angadim's Awakening to get back a single Scavenging Ooze. Okay. Gargaroth is holding the forts. Alright, so if I were to fight the last Falmar Knight with Polychronos... Can't quite escape Polychronos just yet. How does an attack with Gargaroth look like? Could be okay, honestly. Or we could play double Oron Reef Ooze and then next turn set up a giant attack. I kind of like that idea as well. So let me do that first, see what we draw. And then save the last count from Polychronos. As we'll maybe be able to uh, put additional counters on it, or I can just put one now. Since Ooze gets a counter anyway from Great Henge. Extra Inscription. And we'll put a counter on Skyclave Shade, perhaps. Nissa could be nice. So yeah, I think we wait until next turn to set up a massive attack with double ooze triggers. And we get to keep up 
Polychronosis fight ability and its inscription in the meantime. And hopefully they can't add too much power and toughness to the board. My herd grows ever larger. Well, it's a lot of power and toughness right there. Things are about to get out of hand for you. Opponent has to have actual innkeeper in the deck, I was about to say, and they finally get one with Vivian. Innkeeper is on casts and not on enters the battlefield, so they didn't get a card from the beast entering. Could also use Polychronos to fight Innkeeper, but I'm probably better off fighting Falmar Knights. And that sets up a big attack. Have to be careful that I don't die on the way back, of course, but Inscription can also gain life if needed. So. How many creatures do I attack with? Could even send everyone here. Could also just attack my opponent with everyone and ignore Vivian or just send like one or two creatures at Vivian like Gergroth. So now I've got double ooze and Gargroth going after Vivian, the rest going face. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, that seems fine. Opponent could also just have another Vivian in hand, in which case I don't want to waste too many resources going after Vivian. And Gargroth will just make a beasts, because I want additional board presence. And then I could decide to fight with Polychronos before blocks, but I don't think that's necessary. And then hopefully triple inscriptions enough to set up some good attacks here. All right, so that's the only block. So our opponent may be trying to set up a lethal attack on the way back. How do we want to respond? I can just fight Innkeeper with Polychronos on the way out and then save my inscriptions. Or I can uh, trade with Rankle. think I'll just kill the Innkeeper. And then currently I have 13 going at my opponent's face, so I could try and go for lethal. So let's say... Put the counters on Grakma. I gain life. And Shade fights Rankle. So this one isn't going for lethal, since we didn't put all the counters we could. But my opponent had scavenging us to gain life anyway. And we made sure to gain life so we don't die on the crankback. Points at six. We've got some giant creatures, still double inscription in hand at 25, with two blockers, so I don't think we're dying on the way back. So, yeah, don't hit my spot. Managed to grind our way through a Vivian. Finally, Murder Strider takes out Gergroth.
So I'll take eight. They might as well attack with the Vigilant Beast tokens here. But they decide to keep them back. I'll take eight. Opponent's got one card left in hand. And here we can play Nyssa, which can also reanimate Gargroth if I would like. But I think I can just attack, maybe Inscription pre-combat, so I can put additional counters on my creature with Ooze. So how about a Kicked Inscription? And then I can put some counters on my Beasts. I'll gain some life and we'll fight a smaller Ooze. Seems fine. Sack with everyone. And our opponent's going to be forced to make some chum blocks. Alright, then our opponent explodes. Sweet. It's a nice grindy game here against a Black Green Adventures deck. And the plus one counter deck managed to come out on top. But yeah, was a close one, could have gone either way. And our opponent didn't find actual Innkeeper sooner, otherwise that could have provided a ton of card advantage for them as well. So yeah, overall, Nissa, not the most impressive Planeswalker in recent memory, but it does synergize nicely with cards like Grekma, and if you can get value right away by getting back a powerful creature like Elder Gargaroth, Nissa doesn't look too bad. And then in the more controlling matchups, the ability to turn your lands into creatures is nice too. So overall, pretty happy with where the deck ended up. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.